Hi, my name is Jordan Boyd Graber, and today I'd like to talk about how you can help advance the state of the art in artificial intelligence and natural language processing by writing quizable questions. As you may have heard about, we've played some pretty big names in trivia and quizable. For example, at the University of Washington, we played an exhibition match against Ken Jennings. Our system, which is called Quanta, won against him in a relatively close game. More recently, we played against a bunch of people who are really good at Quiz Bowl. Uh, this was an exhibition game at HSNZT in 2017. This was a very close game, but Quanta managed uh, to pull off a very narrow victory at the end. And from all of this, you might think that our artificial intelligence, machine learning, and natural language processing systems are really, really smart, and maybe you could even say that they're smarter than humans. You might think this, and we've done our part uh, to cultivate this impression, but there is a fundamental problem with asking quizable questions to machines. The fundamental problem is that quizable questions are written for humans, and quizable question writers write questions pyramidally. That is, they start with difficult clues and get easier as you go along through the question. Computers have near-infinite memory, and so it can memorize every quote. It can memorize every name in Wikipedia. And if there is an association between that quote, that name, or some other stock clue, and an answer, it can memorize that and get it right 100% of the time. This is far more difficult for a human. And so, oftentimes, these difficult-for-a-human clues appear at the beginning of a question, but they're easy for a computer, and so the computer can show off its ability to get those right while not really being all that smart. This is not just a problem for Quizbowl. Just about every other question-answering data set that is being used in the machine learning and artificial intelligence community has this sort of problem. The questions are written by humans who don't necessarily try to challenge a computer. And we want to make this fair for quizable questions. We want quizable questions to be challenging both for a computer and for a human. Just as humans are able to write pyramidal questions for humans, can we give them a tool that helps them write pyramidal questions for computers? And this is exactly what we've been working on recently with the excellent work by an undergraduate student, Eric Wallace, at the University of Maryland. We built a tool that helps question writers create questions that are difficult for computers to answer. So let's see how this works. So here I've gone to our web page, and I've started typing in the answer to the question that I want to write. So this is the usual way that you think about a question. You think about, what am I going to write a question about? And then you can start typing it in here. So hopefully, once you start typing your answer, you should be able to see it in the scroll-down menu, and you can select the one that you want to use, click on it, and hit Enter. Once you're in the interface, you can start writing your question. This works like any normal text box. You start writing, and as you write, there will be guesses that appear on the far left-hand side, those guesses show you what Quanta is thinking the answer is to this question. So I have just put in a sentence. Let's say that I want to start my question in this way. Even though this might be a hard clue, the system has seen it before, so it's able to say that if I see the phrase Karl Ferdinand Pohl, then I know that the answer to this question is almost certainly going to be Johannes Brahms and it buzzes immediately after seeing Carl Ferdinand Pohl and then this composer, it knows to put those two things together and answer with Brahms. In addition to seeing the guesses on the far left-hand side of the screen, where Johannes Brahms is on top, we can also see what other questions have been written about Johannes Brahms. And so here we can click on Vanderbilt ABC, we can click on that and see that, oh, someone else has already used this clue before at the beginning of a question, so maybe this isn't the best way for me to start this question. And these questions will be ordered based on the similarity to the question that you've typed in thus far. And down below you can see which specific words are triggering the system to answer your question with Johannes Brahms or whatever the top guess is. So let's try to fix that, and I'm not going to change the clue very much. I'm just going to rephrase it slightly. The question changes, and I can click on 
update all over here to see what the computer is thinking now. So now the system doesn't know that this is Johannes Brahms, it thinks that it's Friedrich Chopin. So we've managed to create a clue that basically has the same information, but is challenging for the computer to answer because it needs to basically make a logical inference. So not only does the system need to know that Brahms wrote something based on the chorale St. Anthony, based on his position as archivist of the Vienna Musikverein. And now that I'm walking down this path, I'll change the way that I'm writing the question slightly to focus on some of the academic controversy about how this music was inspired, and maybe uh, the Chorale St. Anthony was actually written by uh, Ignaz Pleyel. So let's uh, extend this out a little bit more, and we'll add in the next sentence. And so in the next sentence, what I'll do is I will continue talking about this piece, and I'll specifically mention that Brahms was summering in uh, Tutzing, which is a suburb of uh, Munich, and then I'll actually give the name of the piece, but I'll give the name of the piece in German. If I had written that as variations on a theme by Haydn in English, the system would get it right. A reasonable human could very easily figure out that Variationen über ein Thema von Haydn means the same thing as variations on a theme by Haydn, but the computer is not smart enough to figure that out. So we managed to make that clue a little bit more difficult for a computer, while not making it all that more difficult for a human. And now we see that the system thinks that the answer is Symphony No. 4 by Haydn, which is in the right ballpark, but is wrong. So while we're talking about musical influences on Brahms, let's go a little bit further and we'll talk about Hungarian dances. So we'll put in an additional sentence that talks about where he got some of the Hungarian dances from. So it finally will buzz on Magyar melody, and so this clue down here is the one that finally allows it to put all the pieces together and buzz with Brahms and get it correct. So we now have a relatively complete question. Let's add one more sentence to the end just to give in a giveaway that will be easy for both a computer and a human to answer the question. So now we have a complete question. It's still buzzing on Magyar, which is a reasonable place to buzz. If we scroll down, we can now see how it's using the evidence. And so the last clue at the very end, where we're including a lot of giveaways, is not really used by the system, it's ignored. And as you're rewriting these questions, you can ignore that as well. Uh, it, where it buzzes is the most important piece of information, and ideally you want that to be in a place about midway through the question. If you want to see why it might think another answer might be the answer to this question, you can change what evidence you're seeing it for by clicking on Johannes Brahms there, you have a pull-down menu, and then you can see the other possible options. So for example, let's see why it might think that the answer to this question is Robert Schumann. And so we can click on that, and we can now see what sort of clues might lead it to think that the answer is Robert Schumann. This can help a question writer avoid unintentionally confusing clues that might mislead the listener of the question. When you're done, hit the submit button at the top of the screen. That sends the question to us so that we can use it to help improve machine learning and artificial intelligence. And then the process starts all over again. You can start typing in the answer to the next question. If you don't feel like writing a question from scratch, you can also take a question from last year's pace and rewrite it. And so here we have a question about speciation, and you can see where the system buzzes. If the buzz is too early, you can try rewriting the question to move the buzz later in the question, and then you can submit that as well. Down in the bottom right corner, you can see all the questions you've submitted so far. As you get more practice, you may want to go back to your earlier questions and revise them as you learn new tricks to write questions that are pyramidal for both humans and computers. We're really looking forward to you using our system. We realize that it's probably not perfect. If there are ways that we could make the system better, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and give us suggestions. Just to recap, what we want are questions that are challenging both for computers and for humans. And we ideally would like the first one or two sentences of the question not to be answerable by a computer, but contain difficult clues for both humans and computers, so that 
we can have a fair competition between humans and computers, and the first one or two sentences will do a good job of discriminating whether a human or a computer knows more about a topic. One thing that I've found is really difficult is writing the end of a question so that the computer can't get it. If you can do that, that's great. By all means, go ahead. But don't knock yourself out trying to do that. It's more valuable to us to get lots of questions where the first one or two sentences are difficult for a computer than to have a bunch of questions where 100% of it is unanswerable by a computer. That being said, there are a lot of smart people out there who may be watching this. If you can do that fairly easily, that's valuable to us as well. It's trivially easy to write impossible questions that neither a human nor a computer can answer. That's not what we want. What we want are questions that wouldn't look out of place at medium level difficulty tournaments. So things like ACF Fall, HSNCT, PACE NSC. If the question would not cause anyone to bat an eye there, that's the kind of question that we want. We still want questions that do a good job of discriminating whether humans know more about a subject. We just want it to also be fair for computers when they're being asked about the same topic. As you're writing these questions, you'll be interacting with a system called Quanta. Quanta is the quiz bowl playing software developed at the University of Maryland and the University of Colorado. But again, we can't do it without you. So please head over to our website and let's start with the answer to your first question.